three of my 2011 college football Big 12 previews as this episode we're going to talk about those Kansas Jayhawks and last year really not a lot to talk about. The, the record speaks for itself, 3-9, and nine, dead last in what is now the defunct Big 12 Northern Division. Entering this season, there is no doubt that the realignment of the Big 12 where you only have 10 teams and it's now round robin where you play all non-opponents on your schedule hurt Kansas more than anybody because some years the Jayhawks, while playing Oklahoma and Texas, would avoid Oklahoma State and Texas A&M and then two years later it'd be vice versa. But now, guess what Kansas? You get to play all of them! And you also get to play Texas Tech and by the way you still get to keep Missouri on the schedule at the end of the year in Kansas City. But there is some good news. You don't play Nebraska anymore. They're in the Big Ten. I do hope, though, in all seriousness, that the Kansas um, administration, the athletic department, gives Turner Gill as much time as he needs. No question, Kansas does not have the facilities of an OU or an A&M or Texas, and they're never going to get the true cream of the crop as far as recruits. And even the junior college ranks, we've seen what Kansas State has done there in years past. So it's, it's, it's even going to be tough for Kansas to get the JUCO um, recruits, at least the players that they want. So Turner Gill is doing the best that he can with what he has. And to be fair to Turner Gill, I don't think Bill Belichick or Nuke Rockney or Bill Parcells could coach this Kansas team to any type of a Big 12 championship now or anytime soon. If you've got the talent, then you could do it. But if you don't have enough of the talent, then all I can say as the former uh, fisherman from Channel 4 in Oklahoma City, Don Wallace, once said, Goodbye, good luck, and good fishing. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the offense for Kansas. We're going to talk about some good things, and that is the running game where they are talented. James Sims, leading rusher last year, he returns, had just over 700 yards, and did see the end zone nine times. Um, complimenting him, though, is going to be one of the better high school players last year out of Missouri, and that's Darius Miller. Serious with doubt they're going to redshirt him, so he should see some playing time. It should take a little bit of a load off Sims' back. The receivers aren't too shabby as well. Uh, Damon Patterson, um, he returns to the wideout. And then you also have the speedy uh, DJ Bershears, he returns. And Cale Pick, who was a quarterback part of the season, I thought he was as flat out awful as a QB. Well, they said, you know what, let's put you at wideout, and he seems to be a little bit better there. And then Tim Beery, you know, if it weren't for uh, Michael Agnew of Missouri, Beery might be stealing all the uh, tied in headlines for the Big 12. Um, Beery is one of the best tight ends in the region, but because Agnew plays at Missouri, um, Agnew is going to get most of the uh, accolades, including All-American accolades. But Beery um, does find the end zone. In fact, he did lead uh, Kansas last season in TD reception. So it's good if you're a KU fan to see Beery come back for another year. Key number one for this team, for the Jayhawks, who's going to play quarterback? Will it be Jordan Webb? Um, Webb saw a lot of action last season. Or will it be Quinn Meekham? Or will it be the newcomer this fall, Brock Berglund, who I've heard is going to give Webb and Meekham all they want? Offensive line, simply put, must be better. They gave up well over three sacks a game in 2010, and you lose the left side of the line. But at least the right side of the line does return, including the center, that's Jeremiah Hatch, over 330 pounds, plus the right guard, uh, Dwayne Zlatnik, and the right tackle in Tanner uh, Hawkinson. So you got the majority of your line back, but unless those guys get better, um, Kansas could be making some changes up front. Quarterback play wasn't good for KU, but when the line isn't doing their job, what can you do as a uh, QB? Defensively, this was an area that was just as bad as the offense because just like the offense, the defense was ranked in the bottom 20 out of 120 teams in FBS football. Just flat out pathetic. And this team, the defense, couldn't get to the quarterback. Last season, you could run or pass or score points um, against the Jayhawks. And that was not too uncommon. And it doesn't help that Jake Labtad, one of your better defensive linemen, is now moved on. So Tobin Opirum will now have to really step up. Opirum who at one point um, played a tailback for the Jayhawks, now a defensive end, and he has been a serviceable player, but he cannot do it all by himself. He will need help up front. Uh, the linebacking core for the Jayhawks, they lost two of their three starters due to graduation, but they actually could end up being better in this area, and this is why. 
Um, Holden Tharp did not play any of 2010 in the Jayhawks. Uh, we're expecting him to produce, but injury prevented him from even getting on the field last season. Now he is back, so that should help from the weak side linebacker position. Uh, Darius Willis reunited with Turner Gill. Willis uh, played at the University of Buffalo in 09, so now he's transferred to KU, and he should help out at linebacker, as should Steven Johnson. Um, it's not too bad of a defensive backfield, but again, when you're front seven, can't put pressure on the QB, what can you do if you're the uh, DBs? Uh, corner, you have uh, Tyler Patman, a pretty good athlete, along with Isaiah Barfield, and at the safety, Bradley McDougal. But again, if the defensive line, if they cannot get to the QB, the secondary is going to look like chickens with their heads cut off. They're going to be running everywhere, and they're not going to be able to hold their coverages. Special teams must get better as well. KU gave up five blocked punts last season. That should never happen, not even on the Pee Wee League level, let alone Big 12 play. And you have to replace the kicker and punter. So special teams, just like the offense and defense, has to um, improve as well. The schedule, you can see it at the bottom of the screen. Even that McNeese State game at the beginning of the year, you can't take lightly. Remember last year, North Dakota State, an FCS school, went into Kansas and not only won, but held the Jayhawks to a mere three points. And as we mentioned already, Kansas gets no benefits at all in the, in the Big 12 Conference. They get to play everybody, including some of those uh, Big 12 contenders away from Lawrence, Kansas. And remember, Kansas beat Georgia Tech a year ago and won the biggest upsets of the year. But this year, they have to go to Atlanta. And you know Georgia Tech hasn't forgotten about that loss in Lawrence back in 2010. I give every team a realistic goal on these Big 12 previews and KU's realistic goal Try to finish out of the cellar. Maybe you can go to Jack Trice Stadium in um, Ames, Iowa and pull off a victory there. And if the plans are aligned correctly, because K-State, even though they wallop KU last year, K-State still does not even remotely close show a passing attack. So maybe if you can stuff the run, you have a shot at an upset. My prediction for Kansas, I've got them, um, no shock here, finishing dead last in the Big 12 uh, Conference, but maybe Kansas can make liars out of me and finish out of the cellar with a game to talk about. The game at Iowa State, and I can pretty much put my Social Security check for the future on this one. It's not going to be a sellout in Ames, Iowa. So Kansas fans, make the trip to Ames. This might be your only opportunity to see Kansas have a legitimate shot at winning a conference game. You'll still be an underdog. But if Iowa State has a season I think they're going to have, Kansas should not be a big underdog at all. So that might be your one opportunity to finish out of the cellar. And I think any changes you make, any little positives you can get, you can build upon. A couple years with these sophomores and some freshmen playing, being juniors and seniors in 2013, at that point Kansas could maybe be thinking about contending for a bowl. But it will take time and hopefully Turner Gill will get enough time to get KU headed in the right direction. That's my look at Kansas. We'll talk Oklahoma State. We'll talk about the Cowboys on my next show. Goodbye for now.